Hello. Um, okay, tonight is uh, my pleasure uh, to introduce to you uh, Iñaki Avalos and Juan Herreros. Uh, they're a very good friend of mine and they have been our guides in Madrid several times uh, in our little enterprises through Europe uh, with SIARC. And um, uh, they are uh, now, uh, they have been professors uh, at the Madrid uh, School of Architecture. They started their uh, teaching as uh, construction professors and then uh, they uh, went into design, which is what they're teaching now. Uh, they have uh, uh, built a number of significant buildings and are part of this uh, new emerging generation of uh, architects in Spain. Uh, and uh, uh, they are now, uh, they have last, uh, last uh, fall, it was, uh, they were participated in uh, the Modern Art Museum of New York uh, exhibition uh, called uh, Light Construction, which probably you have uh, seen the catalog or is uh, a book that is out there. Um, that was a quite significant uh, exhibition for the MoMA and uh, they were in the company of uh, uh, Jean Nouvel, Herzog, uh, Foster and other luminaries. Uh, uh, so, and, and now they are teaching at Columbia University uh, as visiting professors, they are teaching a se seminar and uh, a design studio. And they have, wrote, uh, they have written uh, two books, uh, one on uh, Le Corbusier sky skyscrapers, and, uh, mainly, uh, and the main one is uh, called Te Technica y Arquitectura, I mean, Technic and Architecture, and is now uh, being published in English uh, by MIT Press. So I leave you with uh, Iñaki Avalos first. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lalo. <clears throat> um, I will begin uh, explaining that uh, for us it has been a complete surprise to discover how uh, rigid is the division between reality and the <coughs> American academic uh, world, or at least it, it seems so in Colombia. We knew something, we have heard uh, uh, something about it, but uh, anyway, it has been so provocative to us that uh, we decided to change in some ways our intervention just to point out how this division is incredibly assumed by all, especially teachers, but not only, also students, and how the division between culture or university and commerce or the real world the market system, whatever you want, has been assumed as something that comes from outside and not as a direct responsibility of the university, of the schools of architecture, at least uh, partially shared with other agents. So our intention here is to provoke, if we can, some discussion about it and to underline that uh, maybe it's a growing needness to develop new attitudes, not so afraid to negotiate with the system, not place it anymore in a comfortable ivory tower. It, yeah, I don't know if it, it, here is the same case, but um, uh, I'm not sure. It seems to us that uh, it's in, in any case, it's, anyway, it's necessary to develop new ideas about the work of architects, not obsessed with, uh, for example, the romantic idea of a close relationship between art and originality not obsess anymore on preserving origi originality against conventionality, just able to stab stabilize uh, connections, a kind of conversation. And conversation is a good word to begin our uh, exposition because it is a, a pragmatist uh, a, a word that we have taken off from Richard Rorty uh, because it explains by itself not only our work as a teamwork, but also how we try to link theory and practice without hierarchies as two parallel world, worlds that uh, are always producing uh, in their interaction new and more attractive goals. So, 
uh, uh, we dispose of our work trying to make it appear um, as a unique thing, as a whole. You know, projects, teaching, writing, buildings, competitions. And uh, we do it through an argument that uh, has been important to us uh, from our uh, beginning and surely it's still today our best contribution to contemporary debates. And it's the relationship between technique and architecture, uh, technique and architecture through its implications uh, in the transformation of ty typologies, cities, and landscape. We'll talk then uh, about contemporary technique and architecture, first explaining some of our conceptual work. So this is the boring part of the <laughs> exposing, uh, related to our bigger and smaller projects. And then uh, later, uh, Juan will talk about uh, uh, our built buildings. Actually, this very schematic uh, division that I must confess that I like very much because, uh, because of its simplicity uh, is useful not only to present both of us but also because it contains hidden uh, uh, chronological or biographical uh, position. And it let us show you how the, the work of an architect can be seen as something condemned to be always a work in progress uh, with surprises in evolution uh, as a conversation, trying to go deeper in understanding of the strain of this strange discipline. In fact, this, this is an idea that we consider a key point, <clears throat> that the more important project of an architect is his own architectural biography, his own office, or how he manages to drive and redrive his work, all his works, to make them express himself. This is what we want to transmit here, that this is the project, uh, the real project, a very hard one, but uh, surely the only one uh, that uh, has uh, a real meaning. Um, <coughs> this is meaning or significance is the second word that uh, uh, is important uh, in our work. And it's important because uh, when we were students, uh, truth had a unique name, and it was Aldo Rossi, Perhaps in the States it was uh, Venturi, I, I'm not sure. And everyone, especially in the university, was obsessed with the idea of meaning or significance in architecture, how to produce it uh, under the influence of structuralism and perhaps uh, with this very conservative Marxism that f fits so well in the academic atmosphere. And by a, a simplified analogy with linguistics, they understood it would be produced by fixing, it's a caricature, I know, fixing or posting over buildings that were incredibly conventional, uh, <coughs> historical quotations in the idea of connecting them with a supposed collective memory. This is a, a caricature or a joke, but it, it became something close to, the, to reality, at least to our eyes. And this attitude had to, the consequence of a complete loss of discipline, of interest in the specificity of architecture as a constructed discipline. But overall, it was uh, contradictory. Living in a world where our references belong to the 20th century in every area you can imagine, literature, uh, politics, music, etc., and uh, feeling at work, uh, uh, when we uh, in this, on those years, uh, exactly as if the last two centuries uh, wouldn't exist. At the same time, our culture, our private culture, uh, uh, was under the influence of a very uh, special and particular interpretation of the events of the 68 uh, that took place in Madrid in the late 70s, and the so-called, I don't know if you know it, the Movida of Madrid, in a country that quickly changed from fascism to uh, democracy, with a lot of things to come and an incredibly stupid recent history. So it would be easy to understand how, un how, how uneasy, is the word, I think, uneasy we felt in those 18th century full dresses uh, that Rossi, and especially his very big fans club, uh, proposed us to work on. This is schizophrenia drove uh, us to look for connections, and, and I am ending this discourse, <laughs> between significance 
and the technical aspects of our discipline instead of the historical ones in an attempt to discover a clearer and closer relationship between time and significance. I don't, I don't know if I have... We work, um, well, while I talk, as, as slides will appear without a close connection with my discourse as a parallel lecture, sometimes linked and sometimes different to mine. Uh, we work uh, on these uh, directions in, uh, with our students and organizing as freelancers uh, an exhibition on the Corbusier skyscrapers, as Lalo de, said, uh, uh, writing the text of the catalog, at the, and at the same time we were looking for sponsors and so on, just pushing things to oblige ourselves to understand how modern architects have managed uh, with the industrial technologies of their time, translating them into significant elements, creating through this stuff new ideals of pure and clear architectural character. But um, um, ending this work, uh, we realize that modern period is obviously history as its languages, and that proposing nowadays a return to, to, to them is a kind of perverse historicism undercover by a certain image of modernity that uh, it's, easy, it's not easy to discover many times how old it is. So our work was uh, re uh, changing the focus on an analog uh, link, linkage between technical and architecture in our contemporary time. That means working exclusively on the meaning and the potential uh, meaning of our uh, technologies. And this is the subject too of uh, our uh, second um, investigation or research that, that is this book that also Lalo have mentioned. We have drive so fast, <laughs> I'm very tired now <laughs> to, to get to here. Our first urban proposal were in many ways a uh, prov provocative uh, proposal of some modern ideas of Le Corbusier and Gilbert Seymour that reacted against his historicism, in any uh, this is the truth. No? We tried to propose uh, a critical uh, version of modern typologies, the skyscraper and the suburb, but avoiding to reproduce segregation, making the mix of uses uh, 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 our main dis discussion against historicism in the language and against modernism in the juxtaposition, uh, experimenting with juxtaposition of the activities. More than a conversation, we had uh, then a big discussion, but it was... Um, wait, wait. But it, it was in some ways a discussion between father and, and son, and so we decided to change our opponent, and to research for a closer uh, um, independent uh, relationship with new technologies. We, ha we had the opportunity to develop some experiences where we studied uh, vertical structures. This is a fountain with uh, four meters high. <laughs> this is just uh, also a, a scale model. Uh, we studied vertical structures and how the reticular grid uh, became obsolete as buildings grew up in height because the f uh, figurative isotropy of the reticular grid doesn't work as a good response to horizontal loads of wind, uh, surely you know. So we assign here uh, three dimensional approaches to structural distribution of mass where we understood the main uh, revolution of these typologies now universal in uh, high-rise uh, buildings, uh, that, is the, 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 that uh, obtained the destruction of the paradigm of reticular grid and its substitution by other one, uh, other kind of uh, isotropy, energetic instead of figurative, produced by now by new env environmental techniques capable to locate man in each the, the direction of the three uh, dimension, uh, of the three Euclidean axes, making business the very nature of interior contemporary space. So <clears throat> this project 
is an attempt to unfold new projectual strategies able to deal with a, a smooth, continuous space. At the same, at the same time, we were uh, studying this subject uh, as investigators no? in, in our uh, research and our teaching. <coughs> When interior uh, space becomes uh, an important issue, it's attractive also to explore the very nature of interior space, uh, uh, yes, uh, um, researching the way different traditional typologies destroy their conventions. So we, uh, as in this project, uh, that is a residential competition in Barcelona, so we began to explore it. This, this, destruction of the convention of uh, residential space uh, through uh, uh, theoretical projects but also through some uh, other commercial space where it was uh, easy for us to clarify how this floating space drives to a different objectual culture. This does not deal with mobility uh, or flexibility as much as with a different kind of order adequated to the idea of a smooth, a smooth, excuse me, a smooth space. But uh, <coughs> we asked uh, ourselves if it could be possible to make a translation of all this stuff about uh, interior space and objectual culture into open public space. And we decided to explore uh, these possibilities through different competitions, working on how this smoothness affects the idea of what can be considered public today, in which ways it can be opposed, an opposed statement to that of a tra traditional or also modern uh, hierarchical institutional uh, public uh, space. What we saw is a better a closer relationship with the, practice, uh, with the practices, the special practices of the subjects of our society, less familiar, more individualistic, less anchored to a specific place, with a very diffusive uh, memory. We, ha we have called these projects impunity areas and vectorial spaces. Oh, so sorry. The sense of a new impunity can be developed related to a more uh, fluent architecture, but maintaining links with traditional uh, scale figures, playing in a lot of senses uh, with them. Okay. This is a new downtown or financial district for Bilbao, a big city of Spain. And if you compare it with uh, our first projects, urban projects, perhaps it will be easier to, to explain how the, the investigation of, on American offices and on the, uh, technical relationship with, uh, with uh, architectural ideas establishes a dialogue, a conversation with our practice, and how this technical research expl uh, that explains typological change uh, gives way to new approaches to the idea of centrality and at the same time the idea of order and we can describe it as an attempt to use conflicts and competitivity as an expressive geometry of our time. But <clears throat> what is interesting uh, for us is uh, discovering that the moralism of moderns has no sense in our technological context and contemporary techniques lead us more to play than to serious and repressive attitudes, trying to develop uh, open rules in these games to make the, uh, the game interesting and unpredictable and at the same time. In any way, our aim is directed to learn how to work with the instruments of our society and time and trying to do it with a smart uh, attitude, avoiding being fascinated by its images and topics, as often high-tech architects, for, for example, do, 
but without rejecting to use its transformation power because just because we have a lack of knowledge as it's uh, so usual. We want to explore the possibilities of a technology absolutely different from that of the moderns, not heroic, not, not epic at all, not mechanistic, as modern, machinistic, sorry, as modern was, but rather uh, silent, virtual, without definitive form, simple and easy to use, and in that sense, perversely democratic, uh, without mystery, popular, etc. We want to explore the possibilities of this technology in its spatial implications, but also in its critical implications, knowing its potential capacities and at the same time taking distance from its magic, preserving us to be able to, to use it in unpredictable directions, perhaps in contradiction with their initial objectives. But uh, this is uh, our aim, and perhaps if, uh, if you want to stay here, <laughs> 15 minutes more, you can see uh, explained by Juan uh, how we managed to make real these projects in real constructions. Juan. like now is you don't realize about this change of person because I'm going to talk about uh, other things, different questions in appearance but really I'm going to talk about the same. The problem is that to explain the own work demands to run away from the temptation of makeup and argument well linked, very didactic or propositive. The success of those discourses is sure between architects and students, of course, so hungry of certainties, but it hasn't any sense, at least for us, to tell consular and closed stories what, what I would like to, to explain now is how architectural practice is condemned to a, a contingency and perhaps it's uh, <coughs> That's its uh, greatness, no? a contingency that go through unforeseen ways. And in that sense, the concatenate chronological order doesn't uh, clarify a lot. And the idea of a continuous process is impossible from the moment that the uh, answers goes uh, most of the times before the questions. It's necessary then to talk about the power of words, the original creative act of giving the name to the things, sometimes before they are. Others, when you recognize them. Most of them, time after, like now, for example, when you see your own work from the distance. Ah. Forward. Ah, Santares. Okay, our trajectory is marked by a few of these words uh, which have become with the time our best uh, inheritance and some of them uh, you already know, uh, Iñaki has, has told you, first is technique. After this word will, will come others. I enunciate them with the slates and a, as an echo or as the music, and you will consider how close are the lines described by uh, both sounds. To design and, and build three different treatment water plants along the Guadarrama River uh, near Madrid was one of our first works, actually our first, uh, the first which was built, and it was 12 years ago. And this was a commission which could be interpreted as mechanistic, even epic. The program, the size, the teamwork, with different specialized from engineers to environmental impact experts, everything looked as heroic. 
but at the same time we were involved in our research about the relationship between technical resources and architectonical ideas, looking for uh, an idea of technique non-nostalgic, neither dramatic, as Inagi has explained. And that's because we try to escape from any dramatic approach and transform this, transform this uh, opportunity into an experimental support. Used as instrument of uh, analysis and search, technique makes possible another definition of quality not based on the accumulation of work in the tiles, but in the immediate use of the constructive resources, and turns into meaningless the scale as a problem of size. That's because these three uh, areas perform as pieces of technified landscapes, la landscapes, as didactic gardens where the buildings and other construction have been centrifugated to the perimeter where they work as topographical shapers. We used to describe these buildings as cold-blooded animals laying in the slopes. But they are not only getting a sun. At the same time, they are showing themselves through their situation, through the way they are looking at the artificial landscape of the water plant and the natural of the surroundings. This way of interpreting the site brings a new word, posture. The use of the position as a as, and the presence of the buildings to express their reaction towards the landscape, but doing it in an anthropomorphical sense, like we talk about the non-verbal communication through the posture of the human body to express um, or, to, or to show pride, interest, or submission. And at the same time, that these uh, ideas were discovered by intuition and were getting a new name. Other ideas and words lost their significance. The main of this, of, of, in this sense, was to discover that to work into technology, into technology doesn't demand the limitation of a strict modulation or a, of a, or a spirit of constructive sincerity, but also it's possible to explore the new degrees of freedom that the industrial processes offer us. And that opened a new interest in the relationship between technique and diversity. We build the three, the three water plants like a unitarian project. In fact, they, are, they belong to that uh, landscaping infrastructure, which is the river. And they are in 20 kilometers along this river. But the experimental attitude took us to resolve them with different constructive systems and materials. But the idea of um, open design architecture is really far from, our, far from our interest. And to conclude with a relation between diversity and complexity is so simple as thinking that simplicity and repetition are parallel concepts. So the effort of future projects would be to cross these concepts looking for other combinations using the, the same ingredients but uh, taking those which we are, we, we are more interested on. And what, what, what we want to, to explain is that simplicity and diversity are concepts present in our daily life. And, and they are replacing the myths before of repetition and complexity. Perhaps it's going to be easiest to explain this with new examples. In this case, three sports sales, three sports centers, three similar buildings at the built and projected at the same time, designed at the same time, with the same program, more or less, but in three different contexts, one rural, other urban and the last historical. Three case studies where the experimental diversity of the water plants was going to be turned into a sensible instrument of making questions and answering to the similarities and particularities of each site and program.
And with this intention, we elaborated a series of, a series of rules with which was extrapolated a criterion of minimum interve intervention extended over all the project decisions. Now we know that behind these rules is the idea of system, understood as the invention of a strategy that uses only the necessary elements and giving them the responsibility of significant and scale. This system, this system could be summarized as a pinto in reinforced concrete to integrate the different levels of the site around the main floor, and a three-dimensional rigid metallic structure. The frames of the structural grid are filled with translucent glass or metallic panels, depending on their luminous or opaque uh, units of the elevations. The aim, the aim was to investigate on the popular, or if you prefer vernacular, industrial tradition, realizing that there is a workable approach from the technique to the minimal um, pop culture, but both in a different way that we had uh, received the, from uh, the critics, an approach to pop culture far from the postmodern architects, and, uh, and an approach also to the minimal investigations far from the topical and religious uh, attitude of its uh, militants. And perhaps you, uh, studying in the city, can identify uh, works and, and names as Charles Sims or Casey Study Houses or Frank Gehry, and you are not uh, far from things that were under our interest in this uh, in this moment. And, the system or the responsibility of the system is that it's necessary to test the universality. We can say in other way, it's necessary to demonstrate its capability to, of adapting uh, to the different context to occupy the different sites. Our intention was to, to test how this simple system was able to adapt just choosing where to look at what parts uh, remain opaque, from where I take the light, and uh, with this idea of the, of the posture. And on the right, you have one, one of these three sports centers in Valladolid, in a peripheral city in the center of Spain, working on the dissociation through stillness and quiet from the confused, saturated image of a perimetrical neighborhood that you can see in that back, you know, this, this building giving the back to the noise of that people uh, uh, behind him. On the left, Madrigal de las Altas Torres is an example in the center of a very historical village and very old, where uh, place, the, the volume of this building was really a problem, and the intention was to disappear and make uh, the building work uh, refusing to compete, assuming the quality of a rural wall with the same uh, height. Sinking four, four meters uh, beneath the ground level, half of the volume of this building is under the ground level in order to not appear taller than these uh, rural uh, walls. And giving the protagonists to the dominant presence of the history. This is the third, perhaps you know, it, it was in the exhibition of, of in, in New York of the MoMA. And this uh, building uh, performs uh, identifying by means of scale and texture the, itself with the buildings which make up the skyline of the village. They are, the, this village has now three public buildings is uh, obvious. And at the same time, it op opens up to the water meadow, which is on the south of the town. Now, you don't see, but all the, all the town is looking to this ballet, green ballet with, with a big river. <laughs> the, the idea of system, 
implies don't work from the from the general to the particular, neither from the work in the type to the side. It's a method of working which uh, superimposes different scales and problems at the same time and in the same place. These slides, the slides of uh, building under construction, an assembly shop where the building builds itself with naturalness or easily can uh, illustrate this. They are from a new couple of buildings I'm going to show at the same time. Um, uh, actually, these are all from the same building. I, I'll present you uh, right now. On the left, you have a office building, office block for the Ministry of Interior in the periphery of Madrid. And in the right, you have a office building for the headwork headquarters of the Spanish Railway Company, which is also in the periphery of Madrid. But these floors, as, uh, as the as slides before uh, with, with the building under construction, um, try, and try to, to show uh, how sometimes we have to work with a trivial space like this, quite contemporary at the same time. Um, and both are both buildings in this sense are uh, some are attempts of uh, manage the conventionality as uh, take these commissions as an objective uh, through the idea of system. These two projects try to archive a simplicity which is understood as an increase of degrees of liberty, spatial liberty, operative and constructive liberty, and liberty also for the future life of the building. Simplicity extended to all steps of the process, reducing routines in the project studio at the office, reducing singularities during the construction, reducing also the physical efforts of the workers, and at the end making it as easy and light as possible. And it's also a uh, work, uh, work through which explore the topological organization of the internal space against the usual conception of buildings or office buildings as a pile of typical floors. And in the section drawings, you can uh, appreciate that condition of dense, continuous, and smooth bodies in which the tiles are produced by subtraction. These dense bodies are installed on the site through minimal actions. First, the lines of fluctuation are selected. And in this section, you can see that three big floors under the ground level, selecting how much volume of the building is going to be shown and how it's going to be placed in the, in the site. And second action is to uh, select the horizons to be seen, to, to choose these uh, horizons, and, and to do it borrowing its color and texture. In the bold landscape of the periphery of Madrid, these two buildings, these two silent, silent buildings, uh, appreciate and try to uh, revalue the context. The sites are chaotic, as, we, as you have seen, but it is, this is only a first reading because these places or these sites are also made by sunset and clothes towards offer a reflective texture or a color nothing as we like to, to describe. And with these actions uh, they choose a minimal attitude expanding the criterion of minimus looking for the variety of the mutable is to be so simple that all the uh, possibilities are there, only have to change the light, only have to change the day, the day or, the, or the clouds. Or perhaps they need electrical light for just like the last effort before disappearing you know, in the night.
So <coughs> how to place oneself, how to appropriate of the site and consider it like a privileged topo top topography when perhaps we are working uh, only in a highway like M30 in Madrid on the right or in a boring landscape near Madrid on the left which is a place where we have finished just uh, weeks ago a house for a Spanish painter called Luis Gordillo and in the right is a block, uh, it's a social housing block for the town hall of, of Madrid that uh, we, we like also to show together trying to look for this kind of links between projects. Both the landscape and the highway are public spaces in any sense and are these kind of areas of uh, impunity, fickle spectacles exposed to extreme stimulus, noise, sun from the west, really hard, storms, But not only uh, working as perhaps in the projects before could be thought about the site like objects to be seen, also thinking in the user, also thinking in the buildings, how they work from the interior, from the conventionality of an organization like offices or like public housing where perhaps uh, you don't you, you can't do more than a conventionality th th than a conventional uh, organization which separates daytime from night hours but imagine managing that uh, that conventionality we, we try also to answer some question if it's, uh, if, if it's preferable to change, to in, an easy change of the house or to destroy it, to answer the question of what's flexibility today, or how important is no, how, no, no don't uh, offer fixed points in the floor, or how perhaps we prefer bricolage to the knocking down. So they are domestic space which uh, arrange its relation with the outside, also with the mediation of an enclosure which performs as a fragile skin but regulator of stimulus. In the apartment through this big window and in the house, in, in, the, in the little house through this uh, system of, uh, the, I do say, blinds. No? Both systems are uh, select uh, and regulate the parameters of comfort uh, every time. They can change and they can choose what they want, light, air, noise. And I don't want to repeat uh, things or words I have said before because now vertical uh, organization we could talk again about how the building pays different atten attention to the possibilities of every level from the short views of the ground level I think it's here it's clear or looking selecting the spectacle of the highway in the uh, upper or trying to look far having or getting long views in the uh, upper level. In any case, choosing every time where and how look at them. I think the only thing I, I want to explain is how texture, how uh, 
this condition of mutability gives to the technology a capability of evocating gestures of love, which can be uh, appreciated in this solution of wrapping the buildings with a thin metallic sheet with the same uh, love that uh, this cushion it's prepares the sandwiches, or like first aid to do with the wonder, wonders, wonders. These houses being wrapped around by the buildings, far from a uh, gesture of coldness, try to emphasize the possibility of a positive relationship between technical resources and a cozy domestic life. And in this sense, texture is also a contextualist decision as, uh, as a resort to show pride through being different, but also security. being uh, the security through participating of a violent and exciting places. Oh, it's a question of sometimes making things that at first reading looks impossible, but <laughs> exciting places, exciting experiences. Yeah, what I want to say is <coughs> how these two buildings are there with the same, uh, no, no, <laughs> with the same uh, attitude that uh, perhaps wolves are in the parks alone and uh, together at the same time. And in this, in this uh, sense, I think it can be understood that uh, security and that uh, uh, proud at the same time, you know? Security now, safe, safety, you know? Better. Right, technique, posture, system, simplicity, freedom, or liberty, if you prefer, intensity, superficiality, silent, subtraction, love. That are uh, our words. And with that series of words, we, we try to establish a serious, a real compromise with the reality. And we explain this because it prevents to accept uh, division between theory and practice. This compromise can be translated into, uh, into the work before the last that I want to tell you today is conversation. We choose this word to answer the question about our method of working. But when we answered that question with conversation, only a few people understood that to use the figure of conversation was not an abstract uh, reference, that we are referring to a real conversation, to a permanent and continuous conversation, a conversation between us, of course, but also with the others, with the things, and, of, and mainly with the time, with our time. And by that, teamwork is for us something more than a uh, healthy practice or something like that. Actually, it takes sometimes a lot of energy, uh, at least in the way we do. And you have seen we are together, if the guys together, go to the juries together. <laughs> Two people, always. In this sense, what's important for us is how teamwork, like conversation, takes its most valuable raw material for the exercise of the architecture first. From that look with different eyes to give a gaze without prejudice to that which is around us. And second, from the own experience. Own experience as heap or, or uh, accumulation of the, of the already lived, already seen. 
I'm not referring to a professional experience uh, in the sense of to have done the same thing a lot of times before. I'm talking about a personal experience through which struck the poetical condition of all the conventionality which is around the work of the architect. Conversation as strategy to manage the reality. Let, let us, and I'm back, back into the first world, let us to use the technique as instrument of architectonic, architectural discoveries. And let's uh, also to, to change the rules of the system by the rules of a game. Twelve years later of the water plants, we have taken off several layers of clothing and we can now propose to you an optimistic and relaxed attitude that also wants to enjoy working. The rules of the game need to be open enough to produce entertainment and logic enough to permit an easy transmission. And to play it, to play the game by pressure. That's the intention, the pressure of playing, but why not the pressure uh, also of winning, although it uh, only happens a few times. And like we are uh, here talking against that idea of uh, how strange it's for us to separate theory than practice. We don't want to finish uh, this lecture without explaining how when we talk about real practice or professional practice, we, are, uh, we prefer the attitude of the people who play, the amateur people, because to do the things, um, amateur is not to do the things without rigor, it's just to do the things by love. To do the things by pressure. Well, I think pressure is a good word to finish today. It has been a pressure to be here today. It's a pressure to have friends like, like Dalo. And it's a pleasure that you have given us a few of your time. Thank you very much. Perhaps you have some question. Perhaps some question. We prefer you have questions. We can give the letter in, uh, again if you want. To. <laughs> Maybe you want to explain a little bit what you spoke of at the, um, at the beginning of the lecture, where you spoke of your surprise um, <laughs> in the educational system. I guess just your experience teaching at Columbia. Could you expand on that a little bit more? Like what the, you said there was a difference between. Yes. Uh, no, what I was trying to, to say is that uh, it's strange uh, for, for us who, who come uh, from a country where uh, usually the teachers are well connected with reality. They have a work and they have uh, shown that they can work uh, as they try to do it. Uh, it's, it's very, uh, <coughs> I think it's very special in Colombia, uh, a very special Colombia style. No, but maybe here is uh, parallel, no? is that um, there is a strange disconnection, a very strange disconnection that is not uh, criticized, that uh, perhaps it's, it's seen as a good thing, as if, if all the problems were from outside and not from uh, the architectural theories. And, uh, and I feel that uh, as ever, is, is our, uh, if our profession have uh, any future, it's absolutely it's an absolute needness to develop new attitudes, new attitudes that, ha and that are not afraid of having uh, 
uh, a close relationship with uh, the real production of space, uh, or the way space is produced in our societies. And uh, I mean, this is a problem always, but because you lost a, a lot of, uh, I don't know how to say, aura, uh, something like this. <coughs> But uh, it's absolutely necessary if, if, if we want to, to, to develop a, a, an architect for the next decades. What I feel is that uh, this is the main problem of uh, not only universities, but of architects. That's what, uh, what we have to try here uh, ever. <laughs> try to, to develop an attitude that is able to uh, study and to analyze our contemporary uh, commercial, especially American commercial buildings. This is one of the reasons we, why we are here. And uh, to analyze and to use all this stuff to connect uh, our, our projects with reality, but not uh, using them as if they were uh, the only way to do the things, but as a clear reference to our work, just yes, uh, using them in very contradictory uh, uh, forms, but um, a lot of times in very uh, similar forms. So uh, one thing that uh, uh, maybe is important is, is to uh, underline that uh, uh, conventionality is a very big, important, uh, a very important part of our work. We deal with conventionality always, and, and perhaps we must have a, a better a, a better relationship with convention, conventional, conventional spaces, with conventional spaces and constructions, and just understanding that uh, the creativity and the personal uh, efforts we can. Uh, um, construct in our uh, buildings uh, are just a very little part of our work. Mm. And if we are always trying to develop uh, the more, uh, the newest of the newest of the newest, we are obsessed with these problems of fashion and so on, exclusively, um, we, we surely are uh, uh, losing uh, a lot of uh, general understanding of the problems of this profession. Maybe I have explained something about this. <laughs> but wouldn't you agree that something, some exploration like that, let's say, let's, let's pick up on the point of fashion, couldn't, couldn't that exploration go on at the same time that you're exploring conventionality? Is, is that what you say your work would be about? I would say the two don't mix. <laughs> well, uh, Actually, conventionality is so near of fashion in any sense. I know that uh, uh, point is the, the fragile point of the question. But uh, uh, that kind of fragility is for us um, the most inter interesting uh, places to try to try to be, try to be there in the middle of the uh, opposite concepts which really are not opposite at the end. Conventionality is uh, something which is so present in the work of the architect. Uh, most of the time, all of we are trying to uh, manage the conventionality which is uh, around us in the, in the practice. And there is uh, where we have the, I think, responsibility of transform uh, transforming the commissions, the places, the uh, intentions of the clients, all that kind of things, and and it's that that's what what you have to add to the real situation as it's uh, before you are there, and it does in that sense we understand that conventionality is uh, raw material is. Uh, is something uh, which you have to work with and don't uh, put uh, out of your interest and concentrate your interest in uh, other questions, more theoretical or more, uh, I don't know, that's nice. <coughs>
Sí, sí, no, no. But, uh, uh, what we, we are um, proposing here is very old, so, so we have learned uh, what uh, we have learned, learned several things uh, when we studied uh, modern architects. And, and one thing that is that was very clear for us is that what they did was to uh, just just uh, to look to uh, cities as Chicago or New York, especially European architects. And I, I'm referring to Gropius, uh, Le Corbusier, and Mendelssohn, and, and so on. Just to, to look at these uh, cities that were uh, understood as very awful uh, cities with very uh, horrible architects without any education and so on, to look uh, to, to this uh, incredible material they were developing just with new eyes, trying to understand that they, they in any case, they have, they, they will, they, they surely had to, to develop uh, uh, our architecture in, with, with this stuff, so that they were, that they had, they tried to uh, understand what the poetics that were implicit to these technologies. So, uh, <clears throat> And, uh, poetics means, in a lot of ways, uh, to give uh, new meanings to things that were there and were without, uh, uh, without, uh, no one had problematized them. So, <clears throat> well, what we just have understood is, is that nowadays technologies are yeah, clearly different, but uh, are not at all less important than then, and perhaps are more important today. So. Uh, uh, we have focus on the uh, characteristics of uh, what is the, our contemporary technology of construction, trying to, to understand that in its uh, simplicity and in, in the way it looks and in the possibilities it opens, there is a lot of uh, work to do, trying to develop it in different and more personal, perhaps, uh, ways that it, it, it is supposed they are uh, prepared to, uh, to work. <coughs> so it's a very old question. Yeah. Now, if we uh, are afraid uh, against this uh, or towards this separation between theory and practice, is because uh, we are sure that in the moment that uh, architects uh, separate themselves from the conventionality, they are going to disappear. Uh, if we forget that we are part, an important part of that conventionality, uh, we are going to be completely unnecessary. And perhaps in that moment all of we will uh, dedicate our lives to theoretical works, of course, but it's not what we are more interested in. <laughs> on. And that's because we talk about uh, be, uh, being always in this intermediate situation with one foot in and the other outside of the productive system, to knowing the technology, but trying to apply uh, with uh, simplicity, with some innocence as uh, an amateur do, and not, uh, not believing that uh, technology is uh, you know is the best or is what we need or, or and at the same time don't, don't try to explain the other how they have to do things or how they have to la to live or something like that no taking what what uh, what uh, the city wants or what the people want or just to uh, to work with that not 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 trying to work uh, from outside of all of that, because we have this uh, image uh, of architects working from outside of a world and throwing to the world <coughs> pieces. No, <Wow. laughs> uh, they don't want to mix themselves to some kind of reality. Um, you realize that the separation in America primarily comes from the fact that. Yes. So the culture of, of uh, professionalism or even convention isn't being dealt with in the day of the teacher. Uh, obviously that gives rise to the separation where the school is ever more presented as a form of research for things that are, um, let's say, Columbia may be based on the concept of progress itself or change. Realism into 
is now the most inspiring space to work in as opposed to um, conceptual architecture, or cyber architecture, etc. Um, we can look your work. especially about Colombia and, and, and but we, uh, I, I, I don't think we have uh, said realism uh, 
uh, we have talked about uh, reality, but uh, I don't like this word, uh, this word uh, at all, uh, because it's, it's, it's uh, today is really a, a very a, a caricaturesque or a stupid idea to think that you know what is reality. <laughs> so so uh, to, to talk about yourself or to talk about anyone, uh, well, explain it. Yes. Yes, uh, maybe this is a good description. Yes, for us it's a descriptive uh, word. Yes, to describing because the, the market system or yes, uh, the, pro the, uh, the production of space, uh, how it is produced in contemporary societies. And uh, so um, this is why we talk about conven uh, conventionality. Uh, I'm not sure at all that uh, realism has uh, any close uh, relationship with, uh, with uh, conventionality. And, and, and perhaps it's the opposite. But uh, <coughs> we are not defending um, Technique. If you look at our work, our work is very simple in the in the sense of a technological analysis. So, so we are not uh, high tech. We can't be high tech architects. But if, if we could, in our country, be uh, sure, absolutely sure, we, uh, we wouldn't like to be uh, associated to this kind of stuff. So, <clears throat> technique. Uh, uh, this work. Uh, this work uh, means uh, for us. Uh, an increase of the degrees of freedom. I mean, opposite to this attitude that uh, a lot of teachers use uh, when they uh, uh, talk about construction or detailing or something like this, uh, what we have felt in these years, in those in these years, is that uh, knowing the basis, the, just the basis, just the words, uh, how to describe them and uh, how operate the things, knowing the basis of uh, uh, technique uh, gives us uh, a lot of uh, possibilities, a potential opens a lot of potential uh, doors, and, and then uh, you can uh, manage with your imagination, with uh, um, uh, more powerfully. So, so uh, what we what, what we try to say is that um, technique today has no relationship with uh, a moral uh, appeal or call to order. It, it, it is just a, a, a thing that let us uh, work with more uh, freedom. Just this, and translating this uh, machinistic figurativism that, is, uh, that was usual in modern times and also today is usual in the nostalgic uh, high-tech architects, transforming it in a topological freedom instead of a figurativist, a figurativist machinism. I, I, I think this is what, uh, what, what is our uh, understanding of this problem of conventionality, uh, realism and technique. These are something that maybe uh, I remember the, the word conventional, you know. Maybe. So mm -hmm. maybe it's, uh, you know, I don't know why you use that yes. word because uh, I think that looking at your work, I see that it's definitely about uh, construction, right? Or trying to mm -hmm. uh, put together that, you know, express the construction as the main quality of it. However, we cannot talk about conventionality, for instance, uh, your housing building. Uh, is uh, clad in metal. Mm -hmm. right? There is no other housing building clad in metal in the whole world, I think. So conventional, uh, let's say, housing architecture, uh, the, or uh, the expression that takes is, let's say, red brick uh, housing, right? So if that's the convention of housing, or, or even uh, when you, uh, put, uh, your buildings in with the context, uh, they are somehow playing in the context, but in a different, differentiating uh, Re I, Reacting. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's what we used to, to say. Yes. So Maybe, reacting yes. is the opposite of information or how we understand. Maybe I just want to say that maybe our uh, words 
And we have noticed this morning <laughs> so some about it are, are rude. <laughs> and, 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 but but it's also, it opens also the opportunity to be very, very clear <laughs> expressing things. You know? And in this sense, um, you say the, the cladding of this uh, housing project is metal and is, in fact is the only one in Madrid that is made with this system and, and, and so on. It's true. But if you look at the, uh, at the distribution, uh, the layout of the uh, houses, they are completely conventional. So uh, completely, I think. I mean, we have had no problem with the uh, people where uh, it's a public uh, housing and you have a lot of problems because you don't know, n never know which one is going to live there, if he's young or old or something like this. Uh, but and then what I, I was talking about conventionality is that a lot of our work deals with conventionality and a very little part that we must choose very carefully is just the opportunity to express ourselves as, as architects. I mean in the traditional sense of, of, of the word as uh, people who work in an artistic activity. This is my answer. I don't know if you really no, react I just, uh, to yes, but what I wanted to, to say to this question and also before is about this uh, how do we understand technique as an instrument of fantasy and how uh, fantasy which uh, could be understood as uh, mm, something related to not real things has been always uh, something strongly real because it's the way you can understand that it's uh, fantasy because it has uh, links uh, with reality, with things you, you know, no? All, always in, in film, the, fan, uh, the, the fantasy, fantastic places are like places that you know exaggerated or something like that. No? This, this is the, the sense we uh, understand how uh, using real, uh, reality uh, uh, it's possible to work. And in the question of uh, this uh, space between uh, conventionality or, or the convention and, <coughs> and the fantasy, is uh, um, how, how we try to uh, establish these things that you can add or that you can offer with, uh, with, with every project, with every building, something uh, not new because that is not a word quite important, something uh, which makes the difference but which at the same time can be understood, link it to something uh, really conventional, to something that the people understand. Uh, people know perfectly how to use that houses and at the same time they discover uh, new things re in relation with their daily life. No? So at the, at the beginning the uh, enclosure of the building of course was in suspense because first it was necessary to check if it was possible to live inside. Now they have discovered that it's possible to live inside and they understand a lot of things. No? In, in that sense they don't think they live in a strange building. Perhaps they are proud about, about it. Yeah. <laughs> now because this uh, uh, kind of uh, difference, no? looking for different uh, the, the, the difference between uh, uh, between the buildings, no, uh, and and the context. How we use the context and how we understand the context, no, the context in the periphery of Madrid, uh, formed by people with low income in who goes to go to live to a social housing in the worst uh, side of the city. 20 meters from the highway, uh, and you uh, do this kind of gesture of love, uh, trying to uh, add something to that place, uh, which make possible to be proud of living here. In that sense, for example, in the gymnasium of Simancas, uh, we, with this idea of the system, of the constructive system, we, our intention was to uh, shave uh, money. Uh, enough for don't spend more the money we, we had to do the building because that's very important when you work for the state but also because we wanted or we needed that money to uh, to do a gesture of uh, love to the context understanding that the context of this uh, mm, 
little village in the center of Castilla in Spain. It's not only the castle or the church or the pretty houses, uh, traditional and without heat. No, it's uh, it's also the culture, for example, of the boys who are going to use this place, and that culture is perhaps the same than the boys of Los Angeles or New York because they have the same TV channels and the same information. And what we did was uh, to use for the floor of that building the same flooring that the Knicks of New York have, uh, have in Madison Square Garden, in where they play the NBA. That's wooden floor, quite expensive. We imported to, to this little village. And all the children in this city uh, know perfectly that they have the same floor in that uh, uh, the Knicks of New York and they know perfectly all the names of the uh, people who play in the Knicks and it's uh, they are really proud about this and all the children in the towns around are really genius <laughs> about this question and that's uh, something that we, we did with all the intention when we try to build this uh, little gymnasium uh, in this in this town People uh, around the Ministry of, of Education and Sports in Spain thought that it was too risky to propose uh, so uh, abstract and uh, modern language in, in this town because it's, if, uh, it's not, uh, uh, it, it, it uh, were not to be understood by the population. No? And uh, uh, we, we are so. Uh, uh, against this idea that uh, as you li live in a little town uh, you are going to play basket in a farm for all your life because your town is quite pretty and in Madrid they are going to play in quite good places. No? So uh, we did the abstract and simple, simple building and we add the wooden uh, flooring uh, from Madison Square Garden and it's uh, and a success of course. <laughs> It's the only place in that village where all the population can be together. So now, uh, that's a uh, meeting room, theater, cinema, dancing, uh, thing, everything. It's something uh, really important for the life of the people. One of the, one of the things that I usually find out when I talk to Spanish architects uh, or a way to find out that it works and not ask them about the current work is always ask them about their being their eyes. Quite a number of Spanish architects really don't like this work. Um, you might know Frank Fernandez from yes, Barcelona. <laughs> uh, seems uh, to represent a certain, in a way that you know, a certain uh, uh, Well, I, I wonder if, if, if it is true what you have assumed that uh, we are always talking about program, the instructor, client. No, 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 wait, wait, wait please. <laughs> no, no, but I say, no, no, I don't want to talk about me. I, I want to, to, to answer to your question. But uh, what I always imagine is that, uh, and I know it perfectly well because we are close friends of Eric, is that um, 
the one who is always working on a structure program and clients is Enrique. He's the one who has problems with these kind of things and has to resolve a lot of very difficult questions. And the main time he's working on, he spends a lot of time uh, trying to understand the problems engineers explain him, etc., etc., etc. So <clears throat> I, uh, you have an incredible, how uh, do uh, you admiration, uh, 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 admiration uh, with his work. But uh, surely, because it is so difficult the, to, to make it real that uh, the effort he's always uh, doing is uh, for us uh, completely impossible. We don't want to be always talking about the structure. So our structures are usually very conventional. We don't want to talk about the program. So, so our resolution of the uh, functional problems is always very generic. And we don't want to talk about clients because <laughs> well, we would like to talk about, about us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we don't have so <laughs> so much as him. But uh, I mean, uh, uh, there is a problem with uh, wh what things seem to be and uh, what things are. And I think I I must say that it's very important in, to, in contemporary uh, contemporary architecture to look. Carefully to look at uh, carefully uh, the little differences, little differences, because uh, we have assumed that uh, uh, metal cladding is techno architecture, that uh, brick is traditional, that uh, an arc is history, and uh, so so uh, simple assumptions that that the, uh, we've been uh, a lot of times uh, uh, we have um, uh, been accused to be uh, just modernist. And uh, yes, it's true, we have a, a close relationship uh, with this period of time, but uh, what, what, uh, the, our work is on the little differences we, we are trying to develop. So uh, <clears throat> to me, it's very, uh, it seems uh, that it's, uh, um, Enrique Miralles is one of, of the main uh, examples of the, uh, how much problematic is uh, complexity in today's world and we doubt, our discussion with him always is uh, that we really doubt if his uh, uh, form of understanding what an architect is, the way he works, is very contemporary or, or if it is really, really old. Nostalgic. Nostalgic. Traditional. So this is the problem for us. How could it be considered to be archaic or old? How old? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say this word. <laughs> but I, I, I haven't understood you. Could you repeat? I was going to ask, I don't want to assume why he would be considered to be uh, holding an archaic position. Is it because of the kind of monumentality and uh, yeah, but also because uh, that uh, emotion um, for uh, towards the detail, to the material, to the uh, few uh, or to a small point of the building, like if it's uh, fetish. uh, fetishes, and many, you know. Many people would argue that in fact that's the time, timeless aspect of architecture that it doesn't. Uh, Of, of, uh, 
do what you have to define. Well, all of that is a, a particular way. It's scary. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, you was just referring to common thought that you were saying that in Greek minds were almost passe. Yes. No, no, I, I just uh, want to say that uh, the, uh, this confidence on geometry is very, very academical. Also, if you work on very new uh, ideas about geometry, 
that this is exactly a Duran of contemporary times. And all these architects that uh, think or believe that the main work of an architect is just exploring new possibilities on geometry are working exactly as in Paris they were teach architects in the 19th century. This is what I say when I say passé. Uh, but in any case, I think this uh, discipline deals a lot of time with time. And I have no problems uh, with memory, with tradition, with old fashion, with whatever you want. So I like very much Enrique Miralles. <laughs> <Okay. laughs>